Hi, this is Robert Clotworthy, and you are listening to Oak Island Plus, a discussion of Oak Island and other mysteries from around the world. Here are your hosts, James McQuiston, Oak Island theorist and author, along with John Hamels, PhD and historical researcher. Get the whole story right here, brought to you by Rabbit Hole Investigations. Hello and welcome to Oak Island Plus. I'm Doc Hamels and I'll be your co-host. Like many of you across the world, millions and millions of us tuned in 10 years ago to the Curse of Oak Island and I got sucked in to that whole storyline and haven't left it since. A few years ago, I ran to a, a fellow, a local writer who's also a theorist and um, author of many books on the topic and we started chatting and the next thing I know I get an email from him with a picture and says what do you think about this picture and I'll show you what it looks like it's the part of it is this cover right here and I didn't know him very well but over time we started to discuss the symbols in the picture and I said what about this and what about that and then he throws some ideas at us well, that's where our friendship began, and that was probably over three years ago. And since then, we have worked together and delved into the Oak Island situation, the history of it, and so forth. And uh, we're so excited to present Oak Island Plus for all of you. And right now, I want to introduce and share the, the stage here with you with my co-host. Take it away. Well, I'm Jim McQuiston, and I've been working with Doc for a while, and we uh, a few months ago we decided that we had gone down so many rabbit holes that we were going to create a little uh, community called Rabbit Hole Investigations, and we would just randomly uh, search out anything that would add to the story. So how I got involved with Oak Island back in 2016, I sent them an email about one little piece of information and they immediately called me and talked to me for an hour and then we started trading emails and we traded hundreds of emails over the next few years and they said you need to write a book because we're going to lose all this and so that was my first book Oak Island Missing Links and this is a little bit more random in the subjects it covers but after this book I zeroed down into a theory that's been in my last nine books, including the one that Doc recently helped me with, uh, Masonic Conspiracy. And I brought a little bit of Oak Island with me today. This is a core from one of the drills that they did, and when they hit bedrock, they pull the core up, and these little pieces break off. So Rick Lagina gave me that. So um, you've already heard our intro, and I just want to say thank you to the pretty much world famous Robert Clotworthy for agreeing to announce our show e each episode. So, um, Doc, I know that you have done a lot of um, television broadcasts, mm -hmm. four or five hundred, I'm not sure the number, <laughs> but why don't you talk about a little bit about them and I'll talk a little bit about me being on the island. Okay, well, you know, I never dreamt that I was going to grow up to be a host and a TV producer. Uh, and somewhere along the line, it's a long story, but here in Chautauqua County where I live, I, uh, I was introduced to a gentleman named uh, Reed Powers who had a show, asked me to be part of that show. Well, long story short, I ended up with my own show called Chautauqua Sunrise. And uh, we are in our ninth season, Jim, and uh, we're closing in on 500 shows. It's on YouTube and Facebook and so forth. But the important thing is, is that I've been able to work with a great crew over there uh, in, May in Mayville, New York, and um, I've learned quite a bit about doing TV, and I'm so excited to be doing this with you today, because this is different. This is, this is not talking about local news, but we're talking specifically about going down rabbit holes, investigations, and, and finding out information as you have over the last, what, how many years you've been doing this? I started in 2016. So quite a long time, over seven years. Yes. And, and you've done other things as well as, as, as well as I have. I've done genealogy and so forth. And anyways, so um, doing TV has been 
very interesting and I've learned how to uh, interview folks and ask leading questions and I think that's going to be sort of my role uh, as we go along with Oak Island Plus is to kind of keep us on track, pull us out of that old rabbit hole from time to time because rabbit holes have side rabbit holes and we can get off into tangents and so forth as we both know. Yes. But anyways, um, so people ask me, well who's been on your show and have you had anybody famous? So the answer is yeah. We have had some really interesting folks on my show, and we're going to show you some pictures, and I'm just going to tell you a little about, about them really quickly, because I don't want to take up a lot of time. But I've had the great opportunity to have various guests that cross all sections of our, of our lives. And the first one that I want to mention is Steve Gustafson. Steve is one of the co-founders of 10,000 Maniacs, and they have traveled the world. They are a recording artists, and Steve... Uh, has been on my show a couple times talking about music and it, their careers, as well as Dennis Drew, his other co-founder of 10,000 Maniacs. But Steve has been very uh, um, generous with his time and helps folks out in the music field and so forth. So uh, he was one of my first guests. Then I had the good opportunity to, to, to introduce and invite to the TV, to the studios, uh, was Kent Knappenberger, who's from Westfield, New York. Now, the interesting thing about Kent, Jim, is he was the first music educator to be awarded a Grammy. Huh. And in the picture, you're going to see his Grammy. And the, the, the interesting thing about this Grammy is nobody can t take their picture with that Grammy except him. But I got to carry it. And believe me, it's heavy. So that was exciting. Then, right in the same vein of investigation and talking about things that are a little bit not every day, I've had the good fortune to meet Peter Weimer from Mayville. And Pete does this program just about every year called um, the I've, I've Seen Bigfoot. And it's an annual convention where he brings in speakers from around the world to talk about Bigfoot. And local people have actually reported seeing Bigfoot. Think that's something we should check out? I think that's, that's where the plus comes in. <laughs> there it comes the plus. plus. All right. And so Pete has been really super, and I've had a great time talking with him. And then moving right along, uh, I've had Don Reinhout. And many people, if they know who Don was, back in the 80s, he was the world's strongest man. He carried people on his shoulders. He had a refrigerator. He pulled, I think, a truck. He did everything. And from what I understand to this day, he still holds many world records for weightlifting. So Don was a super fun uh, individual. And then, let's see, who else do I have here? Um, then, well, not, it's not every day that you have Abraham Lincoln on your show. I guess not. <laughs> and so, uh, Ron Carley, who is a, a Abraham Lincoln... Um, I see. I'm trying to think of how he refers himself. He doesn't impersonate anybody. He does. A, he's a historical present presenter of Abraham Lincoln, and he's going to be on my show again this year. But that was fascinating talking with somebody that was Abraham Lincoln for those moments. And I, he talked about going down a, a, a rabbit hole. He pulled me right straight through into his life. And then, uh, then I had this guy called Jim McQuiston, who was on my show, and you've been on my show like four times now, I think. Every time you write a book, I bring it back on, yep. and I think we've really had a lot of fun investigating and updating people on that. And I know that you're, uh, you've got a following, because quite a few people do watch the show. And so that's been my career in, in uh, TV land. Well, that's why I thought you might make a good partner in this. <laughs> so I have just a few photos to show, too. The first one you see here, that's one of my favorites because that was uh, taken right from the filming of The Curse of Oak Island and I'm sitting with Doug Carroll who's their main historian on one side and uh, Charles Barkhouse on the other side and he's a mason but he's also kind of the, kind of takes care of the island and every year I've gone up he's taken me in a golf cart or a four-wheeler around the island taking me to places that people don't usually get to see. The second picture that I'd like to show here, uh, this, I'm standing with Rick Lagino. We went up to the New Ross Foundation that day, and uh, over the years I've become a pretty good friend of his. Uh, in 2021 I ended up spending about three hours at his home um, hearing some real behind-the-scenes things that I keep quiet. but. Um, Next to that is uh, me standing under a quote that I made for their 
interpretive center. He asked me for a quote. I wasn't sure what he meant in the beginning. So I said, well, i got to go home and think about it because I didn't want to give him something silly. So I thought about it, and they loved it, and they put it up on the wall. So all the visitors to the interpretive center get to read my quote. And then the last picture over is just me with the, with the guys. Uh, you can see me with Charles Barkhouse at one of the uh, Nolan Cross rocks. And also you can see me with Laird in the archive center. He uh, has a little corner in there where he's working on the computer. If he's not out digging a hole, he's working on that computer, uh, analyzing what they're finding. And then the last picture down in the corner, that's me and Gary Drayton drinking beer <laughs> at the Oak Island Resort because that's most of my interaction was spending time in the lounge with Gary. But he's a funny guy. So uh, it was, it's been great meeting all these people. And the one thing I'd like to say about them is that they're all just like you see them on TV. Gary might be a little bit wilder, but all everybody, Rick's the real nice guy. Marty's business, um, Laird, quiet, thinking all the time, like Charles. They're kind of like twins in that respect. And uh, they're all dedicated to this. Uh, maybe things don't go as they plan. Uh, I know they suffer a lot of disappointments because of they, they go down a rabbit hole, like we do. <laughs> we go. And guess what? There's nothing at the end of it. Um, but they're trying hard. And I've... I'm really proud to have been part of that, and I'm proud that we're going to take it a step further, because what our goal with this show is, on, on TV, things move fast. What we want to do is take elements and discuss them at length, and get, try to get experts' opinions with it too, so that the viewer walks away with a little bit better understanding of that subject matter. And so that's kind of the principal thing, and actually we have a mission statement, which I think Doc has on his paperwork here. Too. I sure do. You know, and, and I asked Jim, I said, I think we need to have a mission for the show, a, a direction. And so you, I think you put it really quite well, and if I may, I want to share it right now. The mission is this for Oak Island Plus, to share the exploration of mysteries from around the world through a deep discussion of individual element in order to make new discoveries and to explain the unexplained. And I think you hit it, Jim, when you say to take each element. On TV, they move very quickly, uh, scene to scene to scene, where we can take one idea, right? And spend an hour. Spend on. an hour on it and give the historical background, resources, references, and so forth. And I... Uh, I'm really looking forward to developing this over time with you. And actually, just to explain uh, that a little bit further, we actually have an example of our first full show. This is our introductory show. We're going to have a gentleman. You can see him here. His name is Art Guinness. He lives up in Nova Scotia. He has been feeding me information behind the scenes for years now. And there's a road right next to him that looks a lot like the road on Oak Island. But it's not on Oak Island, but it is in a very critical place. So that show's going to come up next month, and it's going to be called Walls, Wells, and Roads, Oh My. <laughs> and uh, so you, you'll want to watch that show when it comes out. But in the meantime, we need to do a little bit more introducing. And uh, yeah. I found it interesting, the road that we're filming mm -hmm. on the studio. You know... When you told me about this, I, well, I said, what? And so what Jim's referring to is uh, a book written by Michael Bradley. You know, Mike's passed. I, I was hoping that we could find him and talk to him further. Well, but it's called nice. Grail Knights of North America. And I know that there's been a lot of talk about the Knights Templar coming to North America. Yes. And I know that there's been many shows by a variety of different uh, authors and, and, and producers but Michael comes up with this concept that on this very ground that we're, we're in this building that we're in right this minute in Westfield, New York. Now, let me see if I got this right, Jim. When I read it, he says that he believes that the Templars came down along Lake Erie, right? And they were 10 miles north of where we sit right now. 
And it came over Portage Road. Yeah, which is right, Chautauqua. right here along the road that we are on. And, and he felt that this was like the final community of Templars before they disseminated or passed away or whatever. And it was so remarkable to read that in there. I had to, <laughs> I first made a, a photo of it and sent you the photo. And then right. I said, you have to read this book. So whether that part is true or not, it kind of gives us a Something interesting to think about. legacy. But, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things that we keep talking about going down a rabbit hole and if you if you haven't thought about this folks think about this you start out on the internet and you start looking up something and then it has a link and that link goes to a link right and that's what we do with our research we go from link to link to link and the next thing we know it's two hours out and uh, we're in a whole other world than we even expected to be in and so with this particular idea we're gonna have to explore this further but I, I I hope we find something. Yeah, Wouldn't that be great. cool? Yeah. Right here in Chautauqua County. You know, Jim, you're kind of a humble guy when it comes to all this Oak Island. How many times have you been there and how many times have you been on the show? I've seen you. Well, actually, I think the count is 13 times they've used snippets of uh, my presentations, either on the Curse of Oak Island or Maddie Blake's show. And I've been on the island, I think, 15 different days. Uh, it does blur together a little bit. You'd be surprised, <laughs> but when you go up there, it's not a vacation. It's a working vacation, and they have stuff planned. You're going to the library. You're going to the archives. You're going to be in the room at this point, you know. So uh, you do get a little break at night. But uh, uh, I had this year actually when the season started. I had the second place theory, and I should have actually had the first place theory. I agree. But, uh, I agree. Uh, you know, you take what you can get. But um, I've met all the guys. I never met the uh, two old timers, Dan and Fred. Mm -hmm. uh, they were both alive the first year I went, but I didn't get a chance to meet them. That would be them. Dan Blankenship and, and Fred, Fred Nolan. Nolan yeah. right? And um, but they were, you know, they didn't come out as much. Let's put it that way. That was during the pandemic, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and the other times too, when they wanted a follow up. Mm -hmm. But uh, some of the war room meetings never made it to TV. One in particular because they didn't have a television crew. We, it was a, a gigantic deal for Nova Scotia and Oak Island, and we'll talk about it in another show. So it was only me and Rick and Doug and the gentleman that brought this uh, knighthood medallion to us. So that, that one, the world missed, which is kind of a shame. But other ones, they used them, some they didn't use, and... I figure there's a lot of me laying on the cutting room floor out in Los Angeles. <laughs> well, you know, I think that people don't realize that when you watch the show each week, there's probably hours and hours, and they just kind of pick and choose. Is it? Am I right yeah. on that? Yeah, and the cameras just keep rolling. Mm -hmm. So I estimate I've been filmed for 22 hours, and they've probably not used more than an hour wow. in all of those snippets that they've shown. But they have a lot to show, too. And, you know, people... Th talk about it being scripted, which is, you know, things might be arranged, you know, Fred and Joe, you be up here on the hill mm -hmm. and we'll have the cameras, that type of thing. But you can imagine if they had to write scripts for all of those people oh and gosh. all those people had yeah. to memorize their scripts and be such good actors that they look so natural, it, it would be ridiculous. So they never told me uh, what to say, ever. Mm -hmm. I will tell you a little anecdote. They told me what not to say because I got to the war room. There were only two trucks there. I thought there's not going to be anybody in there. <laughs> I go in. Everybody's in there except for Fred or Dan. Right. And just inadvertently, I said, "Wow, you brought the whole fam, Danley." <laughs> and they said, "No, uh, Jim, you can't say that. Can you just go outside and come back in and don't say that?" And so I just came in and said, "Oh, hi, everyone." And uh, so that was really the only time that they ever edited me. Uh, but obviously, if they're going to have cameras ready and if they're going to have drones in the sky and all that, mm -hmm. they have to say, "Okay, we're going to start filming at ten o'clock. You be in this position at ten, and we'll let it go." So there's, they kept me in the war room one time for four hours. I only had an hour's worth of presentation, and they kept me in there for four hours. So they wanted to know. They wanted to, the, the Oak Island team wants to hear everything they can. The Prometheus team wants to film everything they can so that they <laughs> yeah. have enough to make a show. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite an interesting uh, thing to do, and I'm very uh, happy that they chose 
me to be one of the her theorists. Now, Jim, you, you said you're number two. I mean, how does that, who, who votes that? You know, who, did, who, who determines that? Well, the first year that they did that kind of um, classification, they said that they uh, used people who visited the island, mm -hmm. uh, people who made comments online, and then the Oak Island team themselves, and they, everybody ranked, you know, 1 through 25 that year, and then they filtered it out to where everybody stood. And that year I was six, number 6. Well then, uh, this last, the beginning of this season, it was on a Maddie Blake show, and they didn't say who the voters were. They mm. just said the top ten. Right. And by the time the first five went by, I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> I'm not going to be in this. I was cheering. I and, was cheering uh, for us. <laughs> so I was standing right up by the TV with my <laughs> cell phone I bet you were. to film it. And uh, they got down to three, and I wasn't oh, three. And I'm like, oh. there's no way I'm number one, but maybe number two. And mm -hmm. by golly, Maddie says... Um, the Knights Baronet of Nova Scotia, our, our second place theory. And I was like, that's great. You know, let's make a promise to our viewers, okay? Here's the promise. Let's see if we can fulfill it. We're going to go back in time and we're going to present why you're number two and the research that you've done and the books you've written. How many books have you written on this? Ten now. Ten? Uh, nine Eight. of them are nonfiction. Uh, one was just an attempt at historical fiction. For something, oh, it, because it was because of the big year of COVID, mm -hmm. and I was stuck at home, and it was winter, and I thought, well, well why not? <laughs> I know I can write a book, so I'll do that. But um, yeah, and the other thing that, that I, I know that we both want to stray away from is being critical of other people's Absolutely. theories yeah. or argumentative about their theories, because nobody truly knows. Now I, I feel pretty confident about mine, but I'm sure there's two or three other theorists that feel pretty confident about theirs. Uh, the one thing I always point out about mine is just such an abundance of evidence over all of these books. Uh, but still, we don't want to get into any kind of uh, match with anybody. We just want to look for the truth, explore on a deeper level individual subjects. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when you get on mm -hmm. YouTube or Facebook, there's so much anger out there about everybody thinks they're right and wrong and when you look at Oak Island all the, the the ten years there's so many layers and pieces and and things that don't go together and so forth I think there's stories within stories oh yeah so there's more to this but you're gonna tell your story and uh, uh, this would probably be a good spot to talk about this um, we're of the opinion now, after the research that we've worked together on the last four books, that the story is bigger than just Oak Island. Whew. It uh, Geographically, it's basically what we call the Treasure Triangle. Everybody else has one, the Bermuda Triangle, <laughs> the Alaska Triangle. Well, we call it the Treasure Triangle, and you'll see on this photo, uh, Oak Island near the bottom. There you go. Right up from it is a little community called New Ross, where there was a foundation there, which we've traced back to who we believe built that. But then it goes over to the other point of the triangle to a place called Dalhousie University. And that university has, the, it was founded by a former Grand Master of the Scottish Masons, and uh, his father was the Grand Master, his son was the Grand Master, his uh, nephew was the Grand Master. The current Grand Master is related to that same family. And the Oak Island Association met at that university, the Masonic Lodge was at that university, when the 90-foot stone, which we'll talk about probably next episode, uh, was found, it was taken to that university to be deciphered. So that university has been tied to this, but, but kind of uh, behind the scenes. But as we've been working on this, we've seen, well, there, here comes Dalhousie University <laughs> again. So we decided to call that our little uh, triangle. And uh, we have a really unique photo of Oak Island too, which is not one that you see a lot. This was uh, shot by Len Wagg, and uh, he shot it, must be from a drone, uh, 
towards the point of the island. I really like the angle. It's yeah. very, it shows everything in a very good detail. Right in the very beginning, you see the, what's a little sand spit mm -hmm. where they call it Isaac's Point. That's where all those famous oak trees were. Then you see the beach, this cove, where they dug down and found the U-shaped structure. You really can see the, the contours of the island this yeah. way. I'm surprised because it's the narrow view of the island. Mm -hmm. But then you can see the Money Pit Hill <laughs> right up above it. There you go. And then if you dip over the hillside, you see the swamp. So, and then way in the background, you can see the causeway that goes over to to the mainland. And that, at the causeway, is where the war room and the interpretive center are. Mm -hmm. So you can see the searching is quite distant from mm -hmm. that part of it. Uh, but anyway, that, so those are all the big features of the island right there, and it's a tremendous photo, and I thank him for letting us use that photo. Jim, I have a question for you. How hard is it for you right this minute not to start talking about what you've written? <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm ready to burst. I want to start talking. But we're just going to let you folks know this is introductory, and we are going to really get into the meat of the, of the topic soon right. on our next episode, right? Yes, and just as a teaser, um, I discovered that there was an organization, uh, they were technically called the Knights Baronet of Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. but I like to call them the Knights of Nova Scotia because they were a knighthood, they had their own intermediary between the Templars and the Freemasons. And I came up with that theory, but I wasn't even sold on it myself for a long time. But we just kept finding more and more information <laughs> until this last book, Oak Island and Masonic Conspiracy, just nails it down beyond, uh, you know, what anybody could imagine wanting to know there it about. Is. <laughs> and uh, I have to tell you that we uh, got together at Meter's Restaurant in Ripley because it was a halfway point for right. Doc and I. And we spent two days, uh, not around the clock, but we spent two days in the back room pinning up our thoughts on a storyboard. First day was pinning up the thoughts and going, oh my gosh, this goes with that right. type of thing. And then we came back the second day and we started analyzing and Doc started putting it into <laughs> a um, Excel, spreadsheet. Excel, yeah. Excel spreadsheet. And even just putting it into the spreadsheet revealed more information. So what we were doing was we were crunching the data. And once we got that done, it was time to write the book. So. I worked off that, off our conversations and, our, and many emails to write the book. So most of the books deal with this organization and its leader and uh, how it's uh, related to Nova Scotia. And uh, so we'll get into that in future episodes, like Doc said. Mm -hmm. And uh, next episode, again, we're going to have uh, my friend Art Guinness from Nova Scotia talking specifically about stone structures like roads, wells, and walls, because they found those on Oak Island, but guess what? They're on the mainland too. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of our feeling that there's a bigger picture to this whole story. Jim, you mentioned the war room. Why do they call it the war room? You know, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know who they're at, at <laughs> odds with in there, but uh, it's a real comfortable situation. They Again, they don't have an outline or script. I usually go in with an outline, mm -hmm. but uh, they're just all sitting around. Uh, they all say hi, and then they wait and, and listen to what you have to say. If you have a video to put on the TV screen, they'll have, usually Dub Crow will fire that up. I have to say that it was uh, really my first time on film to any degree, and the uh, camera people are, there were three guys with GoPros mm -hmm. with uh, handles like this, oh, yeah. and oddly they were dressed in camouflage, which you're in a room, so, but I, I swear once <laughs> the first word was spoken, I never saw those they guys disappeared. again. <laughs> I never knew they were there. And uh, very rarely, if somebody fumbles words, mm -hmm. they'll ask them to stop and they'll say, okay, now just take off where you were. But other than that, they don't say, Rick, I want you to ask Jim this, mm -hmm. or Jim, you need to tell them about that. It's very free flowing, and like I say, the one the longest uh, presentation was four hours, and they cropped about ten minutes out of that four <laughs> hours. But uh, but anyway, the the 
treasure hunters want to know everything that they can know. Right. Prometheus, again, wants to film everything they can mm -hmm. film. Jim, would you say the difference between the Curse of Oak Island and Oak Island Plus is this? And, and let me see if I can frame it. They're digging, looking for treasure, and they're looking for artifacts, and we've been digging into history. Yes. Okay? Big difference. So we're not digging anywhere. We're not getting boots on the ground, as Rick will say. But we're, we're trying to explain, perhaps, the background and the people. And I think they... The two kind of go together, don't they? Oh, they have to. And I know Rick's told me personally that he puts as much faith or stock in the research as he does the actual digging. Because you have to know what happened behind the scenes in history to even take a wild guess as to who was there to bury anything. You're not going to probably dig up that one item that tells you the whole story mm -hmm. but if you look at all the history. And it can take a long time. I won't get into too much detail on it, but... I was looking up, I went down a rabbit hole, <laughs> learned about Mary Queen of Scots cipher code. It took me three months of talking to so many different organizations just to find it. They scanned it in for me. It took me another two months to understand it, to, put, to make anything of it to put into a book. So uh, things can take a long time. I, I worked on a project with Doug Crow one time. It took months to sort that project out. <laughs> and then when it finally, if it makes it on the show, or makes it in a book, you know, it's a very short couple hours right. worth out of, you know, months of time. Months and months and months. And I can see us going down rabbit holes where <laughs> um, we're like, why did, I we, have spent why did we start I have on this spent one? evenings <laughs> going down holes after you've sent something to me. I'm going like, oh boy, here I go again. And down we go. Oh, You know, I was also thinking how fortunate we are to have Robert Clotworthy yeah, as part of our project. This. And if you folks think about this, and if you watch any of the uh, History Channel uh, shows, think about this. His voice started with Ancient, Ancient aliens, aliens, and then it ended up with The Curse of Oak Island, and now The Secret of Skinwalker Ranch. Plus he, he does other special does he? type things too. And he's such a nice guy. It, it, that voice that he uses, he developed specifically for Ancient Aliens, and they loved it, mm -hmm. and they use it on all their shows. And I said, we like that voice, but not real Ancient <laughs> Aliens to it. But uh, he was so kind to, uh, to agree to do that for us. And I mean, I know it's only four or five minutes of total voiceover, but it makes a difference. And what's nice about it, too, was... He had to clear it with Prometheus, which means that Prometheus is okay with what we're doing. I got an idea, Jim. Let's ask AI, what is the Oak Island treasure? The Oak Island treasure is a legendary treasure believed to be buried in Oak Island, Nova Scotia, Canada. Theories suggest that the treasure could be anything from pirate loot, gold and silver from the Spanish Empire, the Ark of the Covenant, the Holy Grail, or even the Shakespearean manuscripts. However, despite many attempts, the treasure has never been found, and its existence remains a mystery. Well, Jim, that concludes our show for today, but before we go, I want to do a special thank you to Jackie Phillips, who has been with us from day one, and Randy Burt. Uh, which they are part of the Lakeshore Center for the Arts and the Innovation Studios here in Westfield, New York. So super big thank you. We couldn't have done it without them. Yes, thank you. And this studio is tremendous. It's making this uh, possible, really. And uh, so I'd just like to thank all the viewers and encourage you to watch our next episode, uh, which will be what we would consider our first full episode on a specific subject. Wells, walls, roads, oh my. And uh, thank you all for joining us. We'll see you the next time. This is Robert Clotworthy, and you have been listening to Oak Island Plus, a discussion of Oak Island and other mysteries from around the world. Be sure to catch every episode.